Okay, so automation. Automation allows you to adjust all the different parameters of any track, any effect, any type of setting within the track in real time. And that way you can actually write it to the performance basically. So it's like having your own personal mixer back there trying to adjust the faders, adjust the pan knobs to make sure that you sound the way you really wanna sound. So I'm gonna show you how to do some basic automation right now. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at a track that was off of my last video and this is what the bass sounded like originally. Okay, so you got an idea of it, you know, and it was just a sample bass loops that were already in Cakewalk. I'm gonna start off with different ways that you can go about using the automation. So the first way I wanna talk about is your traditional writing right to the track so on your track, if you open it up, you'll see an option that says automation, right? Right. So when you click on the W right now, you'll see that it's set to record. And if you look on the left side, you'll notice that my faders have these little red brackets and that lets me know that it actually is going to record whatever I do with that fader. So right now I'm just going to worry about the pan. And let's see if I can pan this from left to right. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. And you don't have to press record, you just press play. And you will see it right. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna put it back in center. And now what you're gonna notice is that you should have an automation read. If it's checked all the way, you should see a little blue. And if it's not, then you should see whatever color it normally is. In this case, mine is gray. Depends on what your layout is. All right, so if it's blue, it should play back what I just did. So let's see if that worked. I'm gonna turn the right off for a second. Yeah. Okay. All right. You can notice that it definitely did do the panning. Now, say for instance, I didn't want that. Well, you can always press Control Z, of course, and that will undo. Uh, actually, I end up opening up something else as well. Another way you can go about doing this is clicking on the automation lane, which is down here, right next to the take lanes. So automation lane will give you your own automation. You can add multiple automations. Uh, and then on here, you can set it for right. And it's set to playback. And then I can go through and assign different MIDI messages. And in this case, I'm gonna set it on volume. All right, so I have the volume here. And now I'm giving this line, everything is right at zero decibels. And I can create nodes and these little nodes will allow me if I'm just left clicking, will allow me to adjust the volume. And then when I take those nodes, I can drag them down and let's see if that made a difference. All right, so I'm gonna play it through. And you can actually see on the left side that my fader is moving by itself. All right, which is really cool. Uh, I mean, I also could have wrote it using the fader, just same way I used the pan knob to go up and down. Let's talk about another option, which is actually adjusting the sound itself. Right click here, and I'm gonna clear all of these nodes because I don't want them. Turn it off, turn the read off, and I'm gonna subtract that. Now I'm gonna go to bass itself, SI bass guitar. And on SI bass guitar, I have it on dance synth. Now there is another option up here that you see automation, right? And if I enable that now I can adjust the characteristics of the sound itself. All right, so let's go ahead and do that.
All right. And if it did it, I should be able to play it back and let's hear what this sounds like. And you can actually see the knobs moving on here. Cool. All right, so you get an idea of that and you can see, whoo, look at all of those little lines going on. Um, yeah, that's crazy. And you can see all of those take, not take, but all of those automation lanes are right down here. If I wanna go about deleting all of these at the same time, here's one way that I found that works. It might be a better way. Hold your left mouse button down, wait until you see the eye, hold it down and then drag across. And then after you do that, you can go up to delete special. All right. And then I'm just going to delete the whole thing. Press OK. And then all of that's gone. I can close my lanes. Say for some reason, I really wanted everything to stay exactly where it was originally before I started doing all this crazy stuff. I can actually do a snapshot of the automation. Uh, so basically, you click on the control of wherever it is. So say, for instance, I'm on track one. And I adjusted the pan earlier, even though I don't have it reading. But say I want my pan to stay right in the center, even though I did all that extra stuff. You wanna right click on the pan, and then you wanna go down to automation snapshot. Okay, and once I do that snapshot, I wanna make sure that my read button is enabled over here to the left. All right, so in the R, you can do it on the track up here as well, either way. So you're gonna notice now I created a little node and this node is gonna tell the track that no matter where the setting is, it's always gonna go right back to this point. Um, this will come in handy if you're doing projects and you know you're gonna have some quick changes like one section may be where the strings are really soft and gentle and then the next part you want them to be more loud and articulate. Um, so then you can go ahead and make those adjustments versus having to literally turn the volume up or literally adjust something you can just say at this point, get louder. And that's it, you know, or whatever. Uh, so you can go about doing that. So now if you notice that I can turn this pan to the left, and guess what's gonna happen? Instead of being on the left, it's gonna go right back to center. And you just saw that, like it just snapped right back because I set a point right there. But let's say right where the now time stop, right here, I'm at the fourth measure, three beats and 41 ticks, all right? Say I wanted to quickly switch to the left. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to the left and I'm gonna do a snapshot again. Right click on that setting, automatic snapshot. And now you can notice that it just changed. All right, so check this out. Okay, and you notice it just went right to the left side. So this comes in handy, you all, if you wanna quickly do something. Okay, there's one more thing I wanna show you, and that's how to automate effects. And I'm gonna use a delay, uh, sinitis delay, right? And I'll leave my pan where it is. So I'm gonna put a delay. Uh, let's do, let's see what this delay is gonna sound like first. All right, let's say I wanna play with that real quick. I've got my delay set up, but maybe I don't want delay to come on all the time, all right? So right now it's a reading. Um, so I can actually turn this right on. I can turn the right on and then it's gonna write whatever I do, but maybe I don't want the mix there first. So I'm gonna turn the mix all the way down and I'm gonna play it. Okay, and let's see what it sounds like. Turn it right off. As you can see, this is another quick way where you can go about make a quick change 
on your effects. Now, this will come in handy definitely like if you're doing delay on your vocals or something like that and you really want to just add delay or a reverb just on a specific section. Uh, you don't have to do it on the whole entire track. You don't have to try to copy it over, duplicate the track, or do anything like that. You can just automate those features. So that's what makes automation so cool. Uh, this is also helpful if you are recording in the studio and you notice that you're recording maybe you're recording yourself or you're recording somebody else and they're singing or playing an instrument you know some parts they get a little louder uh well back in the day instead of using compressions and all that stuff we just ride the faders uh so which means you basically move the fader up and down so if you know a person has a loud section where they're going to be screaming or hollering or singing louder then you can move that fader down. You get to do that same thing. You can try doing that even before you get into adding all the extra effects like compression and EQ. So once you try just doing with automation first to fix your problem before you go boost everything else. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Let me know, uh, have you used automation yet? And if you have, has it helped you out yet? Now you're probably saying, dude, I haven't even really got to automation yet because I'm still trying to figure out how to record anything in Cakewalk. So if that is you, this next video that's up here, it's gonna focus on how to record audio right into Cakewalk by BandLab for beginners. All right, I'll see you all next time, love you.